Well, I'm joined by the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, the Lib Dem MP, Danny Alexander. Uh, Danny Alexander, is the problem here the message or the messenger? I think in these elections we were two things that frankly people didn't like very much, a party of government. Parties in government uh, always get a kicking in these European elections. It happened to Labour uh, in 2009, it happened to us and to the Conservatives uh, last night. But also we were the only party that was making the argument for Britain's place in the European Union. We were that passionate, passionately on the basis of our convictions and we've seen Eurosceptics do well, well across, the whole of Euro across the whole of the European Union actually. Make that a third thing that the electorate didn't like which was Nick Clegg. Well, I think that Nick Clegg is a fantastic leader of our party. He's the right man to lead us through the uh, election and well beyond. I'm one of the vast, vast majority of Liberal Democrat members uh, who believes that. And I think what he said there uh, in the clip is uh, absolutely right, which is that, you know, of course this is challenging. We knew it was going to be challenging when we took the decision to enter a coalition government in the first place. But, you know, we have some great achievements uh, that, we've, that we've delivered in coalition government, cutting income tax, apprenticeships, and so on. But those and, achievements uh, are not being recognised. And Nick Clegg said today that he would resign if he thought it would help the party. Well, 350-odd councillors, candidates and MPs think it would help the party. Well, that's out of nearly 50,000 uh, members of the, uh, of the Liberal Democrats. And whilst, well, well, how I, many whilst, does it have to be for him to consider his position? I was going to say, whilst I, I, I share the, the, the heartache in terms of seeing brilliant MEPs losing their seats, people like Graham Watson, George Lyon in Scotland, who've been fantastic advocates for the Liberal Democrats and for the pro-European case uh, in, in this country. The if idea, more the idea, MPs the, pop up over the next few days, though, and say that he should quit, do you think he would be wise to consider his position? As no, much because of the toll it's taking on him personally. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think he would be, because I think that what's important for us now is to recognise that when we took the decision to go into coalition back in 2010, we knew that was going to be tough. We knew politically it was going to be something that would be very, very difficult for a few years. But just at the time when the last few months we're starting to see a strong economic recovery, where over the next 12 months that recovery will continue and gather pace, uh, it's just exactly the wrong time to say, let's change strategy, let's change horses. But you're just not getting any thanks just, for that, are you? Well, I think that actually when you look at some of the local election results, you do also see that in areas where Liberal Democrats are strong, where we have parliamentary strength and, and, and local strength, actually we did well in those local elections in places like Cheltenham, places like Bournemouth, uh, like Sutton. Uh, a, a by-election in the red car constituency uh, in the northeast. Okay. We have made an impact in, in those places. Now, of course, we have to do better. So we have you've to do got better the appetite, at getting that message across. And you've got the appetite for another six years of coalition, have you? I absolutely want to make sure that the Liberal Democrats are in a position to help continue govern this country uh, after the next election. I in think, coalition with whoever that might be. I think the you are happy to carry on in coalition with the Tories if need be. I think the worst thing for this country would be either a majority Labour government or a majority Conservative government. After all, the Labour Party would, would wreck the recovery going back on the economic plan. The Tory party threatens to take Britain out of the European Union. Those are, neither of those are things that we as Liberal Democrats want to see. More importantly, neither of them are in the British national interest. And actually, I think that the thing that we're missing from these elections over the last few days is that actually a, a, a reading of these suggests that neither Labour or the Conservative Party have enough support to win a majority by themselves. OK, UKIP have done so well in these elections because they're the outsiders. You once were able to do well because you were the outsiders. It, people are talking about distancing from the coalition. But isn't the answer to, at some point before the next election, withdraw from the coalition? I don't, think we, I don't think we should distance ourselves from the coalition or withdraw from the coalition before the election. Frankly, I'm not sure how people think that would be credible in the minds of voters. After all, we told people back in 2010 this was the right decision for the country. We were doing it because we had to sort out the huge mess that Labour had made uh, of the economy. We've proved, I think, that coalition is a strong, stable government that delivers an awful lot of Liberal Democrat ideas. What message so would that it send to bail, right out, to, to bail out on that a few months before the election? I think okay, it's a very, so it goes very right bad up idea. to polling day. You're absolutely certain the coalition will survive right up to polling day. Uh, the, the government will, will continue, absolutely. Look, we as Liberal Democrats, we've got our own ideas, we've got our own distinctive agenda, very different from both the Conservatives and the Labour Party, but we also have to continue to show that the coalition government, two parties working together, something we've believed in for a long time, can work, and it, and it does work, and it will continue to work. You're a very good friend of Nick Clegg's. He looked very tired and quite emotional today. What kind of toll has all of this taken on him personally? Well, Nick is one of the toughest, most uh, resilient, uh, most principled politicians I've ever met. He's a superb leader uh, of our party, and 
I think what you saw there was his passion to continue the work we're doing in government, to continue to make a difference for those millions of working people whose taxes we've cut, to continue to make a difference, making sure that we deliver the recovery that we've started to and deliver He's it. He's not exhausted and by it all. It fairly. But of course, those results last night took a toll on all of us. They're, 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 it, it, it is heartbreaking to see people you've worked with, people often who are who are very good friends, you work with for years and years, lose their seats. That's not something any of us want to see, but it just makes us all the more convinced that we've got to get out there, redouble our efforts to explain to people how the Liberal Democrats are making a difference to this country, how we're making a stronger economy and a fairer society in which every British person has the best chance to get on in life. Danny Alexander, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.